Hey, what's up everyone? Mike Cross here, and today we're going to be breaking down Arion 19's 1949, and we're start the video right now. This is the newest edition of the performance lab. Reach your individual goals. You don't want to just talk about straight line speed. We also want to talk about your ability to be quick. We break down your video. Let's make you into the quarterback I know you can become. All right, so I am really excited to be able to go really deeper into Arian Knighton and how he's sprinting. And really the biggest thing that I really would want to be able to go over here is how is Arian Knighton so fast? And, you know, I'd love to be able to get your comments down below based off of some of the things that I'm going to talk about here. I'm not going to go a ton into some of the things that we've, you know, talked about in the past in regards to, you know, the... Uh, amount of time that he's, you know, traveling. I'm not going to go a, a, a ton into, you know, the whole race. I'm going to really just break it down into a couple steps here, uh, just because I think that looking at the top speed, and, and I think he was a little bit inconsistent, especially as he got to the end of the race, in terms of, you know, where he was um, at his top speed, right? I don't think he was doing the same stuff, you know, once he kind of got to that end and, and was, was finishing off in comparison to where we're going to look at here in the middle. And the big thing that stands out to me is, just the angle, I feel like how he pushes off the ground is just the perfect angle within the femur, right? Because, you know, if I really slow this down and we look to see, you know, how he's landing, he, he doesn't land necessarily and he's not, ne he's not hitting the ground yet there, but he, you know, if we look at like Fambule here, right? Fambule does a good job of landing right underneath him, right? You can see that this is like a, a pretty good landing position. I think that's what helps out with his, his top end speed. But then we would look at when Fambule pushes off, He's at a lot deeper angle. You know, I'm going to zoom in real quick here just to, to see, right? So he's at probably like 50, you know, nine, maybe 60 degrees in terms of, you know, hip extension. And, you know, this is going to be not an easy thing to be able to see 100% just based off of the quality of the video. And we look to see Arian Knight and his angle. It looks to be, you know, around that, you know, somewhere in that, that 55, 57, you know, somewhere in there ends up being the you know angle when he's pushing off and, and to me because you know if we look to see when he's landing right he's landing and he's a little bit out in front right he's not all the way out in front but he's a little bit more out in front but then he's a lot quicker to be able to push off right and that's why again i think that he almost ends up just having such a perfect angle there as he, he's coming off the ground right again closer to like 54 55 i feel like within that that femur angle and that makes it so then when he's coming up he just gets such a great vertical action because you know once that foot comes off the ground if we look to see the time from here we're at 13181 and he's cycling through and he hits the ground again at about 181 or sorry 14 point you know 181 right so he's a little bit long okay and and being six foot three right he has a little bit more of an ability to have that length right he can have uh, a good amount of uh, time spent on in the in the air right i mean if we look to see like usain bolt though usain bolt is his top was running about 0.35 you know sometimes maybe 0.36 but he was six foot five right but you can tell that arian knighton really has long legs right so that makes it so he could use you know that 0.37 you know while it might end up seeming a little bit inefficient and he could probably get that number down a little bit i think that he makes up for it by having such great foot contact right because if we look to see you know how fast he's right back off the ground you know he's under 0.1 seconds he's probably 0 0.09 somewhere in there and that's what stands out about these top athletes right they're able to very very efficiently land and then come right back off the ground Right? That's like the biggest thing is like foot contact time. I see guys all the time that are running pretty good uh, turnover times, right? How much time their, their foot's off the ground. But in terms of the guys that are the best, they're just so good at being able to land and immediately push right back off the ground, okay? And, and do that so efficiently, okay? And, and what stands out to me with Arian Knighton, which I think really separates him, is his ability to, you know, be quick with his foot contact time. And then he, you know, picks up a lot of distance per step because of his, you know, turnover rate, how much time that he ends up spending off the ground. And I think it's a combination of, you know, how he's hitting the ground and also, again, the angle that he's hitting the ground at. And that's what I'm curious on, guys, is like, what do you guys think is the best angle to be pushing off with that, that leg. And also, is that something that you feel like is, is trainable, right? Can you get yourself to be able to, like, let's say right now you're at a, um, you know, 60 degree angle or 65 degree angle. Can you train yourself to get a 55 degree angle in your femur 
during your toe off or is that something that's just like more of a genetic thing? I think to me, you know, it is something that you could, you could train, you know, you might be able to make some, some uh, subtle differences, but I, I do think it'd be tough to go from maybe like a 65 degree to a 55 degree, especially if you are like a full grown athlete. Right. I think that those, some of those angles end up being just, you know, what you're born with. So then you have to be able to optimize what is it that you're doing with your foot off the ground or, you know, some of the body positions or, or your, you know, like things like posture, uh, turnover rate, things like that can end up, you know, being able to compensate. But if you have a great femur angle during your toe off, that's going to be something that's really going to help you in terms of, you know, distance per step, which is critical. Right. And how you're creating force into the ground. And those, as we know, are two critical things here. And that's what I think Area 9 really has going for him. And that's why, you know, he was able to run that 1949. And, you know, as we talked about before, this guy is one of the most exciting sprinters in uh, the entire world, I think, right now. Because there's so many questions that of, of, like, how much better can he really get? Because even in my opinion, I, I, I think the last 20 meters, he wasn't even running. You know, and he still ran 1949, which is a, you know, he just beat his own uh, record in terms of under 20 in, in the uh, 200. So, you know, the, the world is, or, or the track and field world is really, you know, at the helm of Aaron Knight in a lot of ways here, especially in the 200 because of how talented he is. So, so yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. And if you have any questions, comments, recommendations, you can go ahead and you know, leave those down below as well. Uh, like the video, subscribe. That always helps us out a ton. And you can check out the description for some of the things that we have going on here within our speed breakdowns, uh, our speed programs, you know, some of the things that we're doing in terms of in-person training or, you know, online training with some Zooms and things like that. So there's a lot of ways for you to be able to improve your speed here. And I highly recommend you guys taking action just because I know that once you start taking actions, once you start going in the direction of how you can improve, it really gives you the opportunity to make a big change here in a very short amount of time. And that, again, in my opinion, ends up being the most important thing that you could do as an athlete is really being able to, you know, make some decisions some small decisions within your overall day, overall life that can end up over the course of, you know, two weeks, four weeks, four months, 12 months, make a big difference in terms of your performance. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know and we'll talk to you soon.